In this video I'm going to help you decide which programming language is the best to learn first. Hopefully by the end of this video you will have a good idea of the languages you should be taking a closer look at. If you are looking for which language is the easiest to learn first, I have made a separate video to answer that and I will link to it at the end. Ah. The following diagram that you see here summarizes the main considerations in choosing a programming language to learn. So you're going to be driven mainly by your interests. For example, if you're looking to go into computer science, then C is probably a very good language to learn. But a web designer will find very little use for C. So first, identify your interests, and then I'll show you which languages uh, meet those criteria. You also have to look at your requirements. What do you actually hope to get out of programming? Are you looking just to learn programming as a skill or do you need a language that does something very specific? For example, you want to do statistics in programming, then you'd be looking at something like R, which is a programming language specifically written for statistics. Um, and if you're doing just statistics, you can dodge a lot of programming by just going straight to R. You don't have to learn um, things like objects and that you would have to learn for Java. You also have to consider what you're going to do in the future, where's your programming going to lead you? Uh, are you going to learn just one language? Or are you going to be planning on learning multiple languages? Because if you're learning multiple languages, then you may as well start with something like Python, which is nice and easy to get um, a rough idea of, and then learn the other more difficult languages. And then that will make your programming far easier. You also have to think, about what the requirements are for your career. That's going to be a major driver of your choice and I'll give you a rough idea of some career tracks and what programming languages would be appropriate for them in later slides. Probably the most useful consideration for most people will be which is the easiest and which is the hardest. Now in this video I'm just giving my opinion of it and people will passionately disagree with what I'm saying, but the more opinions you get the better. And I would say for the easiest languages in a rough order would be HTML is a very easy language, followed by Python, PHP and Visual Basic. All of these languages are reasonably easy to get your hands around, um, HTML being the easiest of them. HTML is not particularly difficult. On the other hand, you've got some very difficult languages like Malboggle, which is um, the less said about that, the better. And no one understands that. You've got Pascal. The saying about Pascal is that it's by geniuses for geniuses. Ajax is also a nightmare, but there's great demand for people who are skilled in that. And C++ is not much fun to start with. Um, the other thing that will drive your choice is you need to consider your ability and experience. People who have a lot of experience with problem solving, for example, engineers or people who've learnt high level of maths, could just start with C, Java or even Pascal because you've got the sort of ability to solve difficult problems and think in a specific way that works very well for programming. However, if you've got little experience of solving tough problems on a regular basis, then you're going to have to start with an easier language like Python or HTML just to get your mind around the way that you would set out a code. Uh, that's the thing that people find so difficult when they start to program, is thinking in programming terms. Another important consideration is the overlap in programming languages. This is very important when you're considering future languages. What you're going to learn, are you just doing one or many? So if you're doing many, then overlapping is going to be very important. Uh, many languages are very interconnected. So learning one language will make it easier to learn another language. But in general, learning one language makes every language easier because you've went from not knowing how to program to knowing programming and you can think in that programming way. 
that's a good example of the overlap in languages. Um, you have the C programming language and you have the Objective C language. Everything in C is in Objective C. Objective C is like an extension of C. So if you can program in C, learning Objective C as a second language is far easier than learning any old language. You also find that if you can program in Python, learning C is a lot easier. And if you learn C, learning Python is very easy. Um, if we look a bit further at C, there's lots of other languages that come off C. You've got C++, which some people argue is replacing C, or should replace C. You've got C Sharp, Objective C, that we've uh, looked at previously. And you've also got MATLAB. MATLAB takes a lot of its, what we call syntax, or the way you write code, comes straight out of C, and you can, in fact, write C code in MATLAB. So if you know how to program in C, writing MATLAB scripts is not particularly difficult. Uh, but the main thing you have to get when you're learning a programming language is what I would call the big ideas. There's just some fundamental parts of programming that you just have to know. So if you get a language that includes most of or all of these things, then that is going to give you a very good start to being a programmer. Uh, things like if statements, loops, which is repeating bits of code over and over and over again, usually changing a variable while you're running it. You got um, actually declaring variables, things like data types, is it an integer, has it got decimals on it? You learn about all these sort of things with various programming languages. You'll find all of these um, things in Python and C and Java will cover these sort of things. So I would make sure that you cover as much of this slide as you can when you're learning how to program for the first time. Now let's move on and look at the baskets that I promised you. So if you're looking at maths, engineering or statistics, then these are the four languages I would suggest you focus your time researching. Uh, MATLAB is sort of the standard language that engineers know. R is specifically written for statistical computations. So if you're doing statistics, R is the one to go with. Mathematica is a very good um, piece of software and it's more intuitive to mathematicians and Pascal is also very good for scientific computations. Let's say you're just wanting to learn to code just for the sake of learning to code, uh, just an interest maybe, then these are the languages I would suggest. You've got things like C, Java, Pascal, and Python. Uh, C and Java are the big programming languages. They're the most known programming languages and the, often the most used. Pascal, some people say, is um, a great language to learn because it's very compact and it makes you program in a very specific way and you've also got Python which is a great language because it's so vast and you, it's general purpose so you can do pretty much everything and it's not wildly difficult to get started with it's one of the easier languages and it's got an emphasis on readability and simplicity Let's say you're looking at doing web design. Um, if you don't know HTML, you're not going to be a web designer. HTML is just so essential to the working of the internet. And HTML is a reasonably simple language. In fact, it's a very easy language to learn. It's probably, as I said before, the easiest of the languages. There's a course on Codecademy that they say takes seven hours. And by the end of that course, you've got a pretty good understanding of HTML and can do most things. W3 Schools also has a very good HTML course, that's how I originally learned it. Uh, Java, you've probably seen it all over the internet. PHP, very good general purpose language, used extensively online. About 85% of server side programming is done in PHP. SQL is very important, particularly for big websites that's used for managing databases and Ruby is one of the other big online programming languages. 
if you're just looking f to make more money or get a job because of your programming skills then you'd really be looking at things like Java, C++, SQL. Uh, these tend to be the most useful or in-demand languages. I've also suggested that you consider a rare or an advanced language. This can be a great asset when you're applying for a job because it allows a company to expand their capabilities without spending money sending someone off for a month to go and learn this programming language. So things like Ajax might be one to look at. But if you're looking just to make specific things, these are the languages you should be considering. Um, games design, the big language for gaming is C or C++. This is pretty much a must know. So if you're applying for a um, job in this area or to do a course, learning C or C++ would be a great boost. Uh, PHP is used a lot for online games and there's one called OpenGL which is also widely used. For web design I've touched on all of this. You've got HTML, PHP, SQL, Java. There's also ASP.NET which is for more server side stuff. A lot of people are probably interested in making apps. The annoying thing about apps is uh, Apple apps are written in one language and Android apps are written in another language. So you've pretty much got to make a decision or learn both. So if you're going for Apple programming, you're going to be on the iPhone operating system, iOS, so you're going to have to learn Objective-C. And if you want to be on Java systems, uh, Android systems rather, you're going to have to learn Java. And hopefully it should be useful to look at the Hello World program. This is the simplest program usually in a language and it gives you a rough feel of how the language works. So let's look at a few of these languages and their Hello World codes. So here's some examples that I've made up. In HTML everything's done with these what you call tags. This is an open tag and then that slash HTML is the closing tag. So in between these two tags is HTML. You've got a header, write this on the tab. So you see when you're in an internet browser, um, that tab, when you're running this page, will say write this on the tab. You see you've got a start header, end header, you've got the header in here, the title, and then the end of the title and then the body is just hello world and then you end the body with a closing tag. HTML, very simple. Java is nastier. You've got a lot of other stuff going on there. And you've got these annoying semicolons at the end of lines. If you don't have that semicolon it can go, the program won't run. And you need these annoying brackets. It's the same in C you'll notice. It's annoying brackets, you've got to declare a main function, you've got to include the standard library. It's just extra levels of complexity, which you don't find in JavaScript and Python. You can do that in one line, and Python is the simplest, just as print, hello world. And these quotation marks, they just mean a string, and a string is just letters and characters. And if you're interested in Malboggle, the one that I said is the hardest language, apparently this is what it's supposed to be. Someone could have just made this up, I don't think anyone would know. So if you have a compiler that does it, maybe you can run that and see if it prints Hello World. I don't know. Now let's take a closer look at some of the most important languages that we've touched on. We've got Python, as I said, an emphasis on readability and simplicity. It's nice, simple language to learn. I think it's quite a good start to programming. That's the one that I tell people if they say, uh, I want to start programming, what should I learn? I say Python's probably your best bet as a starter language. HTML, absolutely essential for web designers and very, very easy to learn. I'd be surprised if you struggle endlessly to do simple things in HTML. It's not difficult. C and C++, 
are more difficult and are what's called low level. They're very close to the machine. You can like manipulate individual memory locations. You can like put the number five in a specific part of the computer and then you can tell write a program that says look in this memory location and it'll find the number five. It's that low level. And C and C plus plus are very, very heavily used languages because you can do so much with them. As I said with PHP, you've got a general purpose language, essential for proper web development, and if you're working with servers, PHP is very important. And if you're looking at maths and science, MATLAB's a really good bet. And if you already know C, or you're planning on learning C anyway, MATLAB's also good to look at. I just put this out here. Um, this I think is quite a good idea. If you want to be a professional programmer, then starting with C, Java, and then some other languages, that makes you a programmer. If you've covered C, Java, and something else, I would call you a programmer. And uh, obviously, you're going to want to know where you can actually learn to code. There are so many excellent resources on the internet that you'll find hugely useful. edX is great. You can take free courses and get a certificate to say that you've done them. You get video lectures. They're very, very good. I'm a big fan of edX. W3 Schools, where I learned HTML, very good. Code Academy, another great one. I learned Python there. You learn by doing. Udacity, Khan Academy, and just YouTube. Uh, you can watch people write code and explain exactly how their code works. It's very useful. And you've got MIT Open Courseware as um, a very popular lecture series called Introduction to um, Computer Science and Programming that is a very, very good course and will give you a great grounding in just how programming works. And the, really the best way to learn programming is to be doing it. That's one of the great things if place like W3 Schools and Code Academy. You're actually learning the code by writing the code. You're getting a little bit of theory and then you're getting a task to do and you're writing a bit of code using the theory you've just learnt. And it has never been easier to learn how to code. Uh, trying to learn to code 30 years ago. I will leave you with a few important points to take note of. Firstly, you can usually write the same program in other languages. For example, you could write a code to do X in C or in Python and you would get the same result. You can often do the same thing in a different language but just in a different way. Also, it's worth considering learning a high-level language and a low-level language. So you're co covering a very wide base in your programming. For example, learning C and then going on to learn MATLAB. So you'll find when you use a high level language you can do things a lot quicker and more efficiently but when you need exact control over how something's working a low level language is very useful. And finally I would suggest that you don't take my word for it. That before you go on to choose which programming language you're going to learn first that you consult lots of resources because it's a very important decision and you want to make it correctly. This is based on my experience and my opinions and there's a lot of people on the internet who will passionately disagree with what I've said and you should take note of them and read their ideas. And after doing that you'll have a good idea of which programming language is the one that you should go away and spend a lot of your time learning. So good luck with your programming and thank you for watching.